So what is the role of pathologist now? Okay, as a neuropathologist, what are, what are you supposed to do? Okay, well, how are you going to help them? So our role is to provide definitive diagnosis, exclude possible differential diagnosis. And this you can do so only by working very closely with the neuroradiologist, the neurosurgeon, and yourself, the neurologist. So they all will give you important vital clues to help you arrive at a diagnosis. And it is mo most often a multidisciplinary approach to neuro cases. Okay? Because you cannot sit alone and do a diagnosis because you are definitely going to miss the grade or there may be some discrepancy when the final diagnosis come out and you, we correlate the histopathology findings with the neuroimaging. So it is very essential to work in cohesion with the neuroradiologist and the neurosurgeon. Okay? So pieces have to fit together and they will, if you co combine all the clinical, radiological and pathologic features, they will match and the jigsaw puzzle will come to and you will have a unifying diagnosis. Okay, And you can, it will also help you address the discrepancies. What is there and what is not. Sometimes a area may be left behind and the tumor surgeon has taken everything out. If that area left behind is a high grade tumor and you end up giving it a low grade, the surgeon will understand, look, yes, madam, I did not take that area because it's near, near a motor cortex or some vital area. And so I had to leave behind. So it makes sense that whatever was taken out was low grade and the high grade still is there. And they will address that part which is not removed by radiation. So this is how the decisions are made in treatment also. So when it comes to neuropathology and when we're dealing with tumors, it is location, 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 and location. So where the tumor is located decides. Even a benign tumor in a brainstem will be detrimental. Patient will be dead in a couple of weeks. Okay. So where the tumors occurs also a, a large tumor and you can afford to take it out in the hemispheres and patient can still do well. They can be uh, okay and he can still chug along. So where, where the tumors occur matters. That is why I spent so much time explaining to you what are the different structures, what are the vital structures, where we have to see it and how we have to evaluate the samples. So what are the types of uh, samples you get in neuropathology? Typically, there could be endoscopic biopsies, stereotactic biopsies, open, partial resection, gross total resection, and even sometimes lobectomies. Okay? So these are the type of samples we, we come across. So there will be also what is called a stereotactic biopsy versus open biopsy. This is where they put a frame on the head and they locate the coordinates very clearly, put a needle, go take a straight tube of tissue and then give it to you. So these are stereotactic biopsies. These are very... They, they cause a lot of angst to the uh, pathologist because a lot of thing is missing here. We cannot arrive at a correct diagnosis. When we are doing stereotactic biopsies, when surgeon is doing, we need a lot of help from the neuro radiologist or the radiology colleagues will be of lot of help in such cases to correctly diagnose the lesions. Okay, Open biopsy, open biopsy, you have enough tissue, there will be a lot of cortex, white matter, and you have enough tissue at your disposal on the left-hand panel, which is the open biopsy. So we, we do have some leeway in the open biopsies and we can be comfortable in giving diagnosis. But stereotactic biopsies, I will not evaluate without a MRI next to me or a neuroradiologist telling me what the findings are. I'm telling you, investing in a good neuro, neuro radiologist or radiologist will pay you dividends, neuropathologist, future budding neuropathologists. 